Welcome back to the Mel K show. My guest today has become a regular on this show and I'm a huge fan of his and you are too. Thank you for joining me, John Clark. Thank you for having me as always. I do look forward to it. Ah, oh, thank you. I look forward to it too. Cause you know a lot about many, many things that are uh, issues now. Uh, not only are you a farmer at a real farm that still functions, but you're also a lawyer. You've been dealing with the government for many, many years and um, also have your eyes on what is going on in our own government. But today we have the day of the eclipse and apparently uh, people are driving up past your uh, home to Burlington, Vermont. What is going on? Well, it's a rare event here to have not just an eclipse, but to have our entire state eclipsed by the influx of people. I don't even know where they're going to stay. The right. hotels are full. They're actually worried about it. They shut down most of our schools. So we live wow. just below the beginning of this, you know, supposedly prime spot to look at the sky. And uh, I was hoping it would be a cloudy day so that they would stay home. Uh, but they're here in droves and wow. uh, they're they as they they predicted. So our state, we only have a state population. Your viewer, your viewers may not know this. Vermont is a state of about six hundred and forty thousand people total. Wow. And that's a lot of power for just Bernie Sanders per vote. You know, we have a lot of votes in the Senate comparatively. Right. Uh, when two hundred thousand people, as estimated, come into the state in one day. Uh, my wife went into town and a person who was listening to the police scanner said they'd already had more uh, accidents this morning than we usually have in a month. Wow. And she saw people driving crazy. I went out to get some round bales for my cows from a neighbor and I have to go under Route 89, which is the main route south to go up to Burlington, Vermont, which is sort of the uh, the Mecca. Uh, you get to go to the Green Mountains and you wave the, the last few cows remaining and then you go look at the at the, you know, the eclipse. And so that highway is completely uh, was was choked with traffic. And I could see they're all out of state plates. We don't have that many people to right. do that. And then when I came down to come to my farm, I jogged briefly on Route 14, which is a, an off, you know, it's not a main highway, an interstate highway. It's a, it's a secondary road. And there were people flying on that, trying to get to the eclipse in time, probably, because now they're held behind. So um, so it's a little bit pandemonium here. So that's why you and I are doing the eclipse broadcast. Um, yes, we are. Yes, we are. And um, and again, you know, you uh, you have said before that you watch these these events happen. And when they have one, um, this one is extraordinary. They close schools. They put out emergency alerts in every state. Basically, um, the uh, there's been nonstop social media chatter. There's lots of speculation. You got also, the biblical people have their uh, what they believe is going on. Then you have the uh, the scientists debating what's happening and what's. And then we have CERN is going to be participating, and NASA is going to be participating. I've never seen anything like this, but we are living in a in a time, especially post COVID, where whatever can stoke fear and chaos seems to work for the powers that be. So it's a little bizarre uh, as we go through this day, but. Uh, I personally don't believe that much will happen. I, I also think that a lot of these events, especially when you have the entire all of government all in, just like we talked before about Trans Visibility Day, that all I think about was like, what was the meeting like when they sat down and they said, OK, we're going to put this Trans Visibility Day. It's going to fall on Easter. Friday of Easter, we're going to have every government agency tweet about it. And then all the governors, you know, the, the COVID governors, I call them. So Newsom and Whitmer and Hochul and, and Ives, they all tweet about Trans Visibility Day just in time for Easter. And everyone and then on Monday, Intel television known as MSNBC and all their all their other you know, globalist cronies are out there like, God, those horrible Christians and Catholics, they're so hateful. They were so mean about Trans Visibility Day. I mean, the whole concept is so bizarre to me. What, what did you make of, of this? And it was a planned rollout PR campaign on an, uh, a global, I mean, in America, but the whole world was talking about it. And they acted like, you know, these Christians and Catholics, they're just hateful. Well, I'm I'm amused at your little uh, diatribe there because you're dead on. And I'm one of those biblical people in the sense that I'm a Christian. I'm not really worried about the eclipse at all. God's in charge of the universe. But I agree. Um, but this world's run by a, a really creepy sniffer guy and, and a Klaus 
a German accent guy and a lot of others who seem to think they're gods. Yeah. And so I'm actually worried that this very thing, for instance, a natural event like this, it's not just Christians, but Muslims or, you know, all, all religions can attach certain levels of significance to these sorts of events. And it's a perfect opportunity when you have a government that is trying to churn up fear, because fear is a liar and people do not act in love or reason out of fear. And they're quick to give up their rights to the government to protect them. And this is a government, you know, we don't have to hear, we hear about the threat of Trump becoming a tyrant. We already have one. We already have a, a, a as we'll talk about in a minute, an administration that has repeatedly bypassed basic constitutional rights and processes to cut out the middleman of the taxpayer slash voter, no, re no taxation without representation. Somebody should tell Klaus Schwab and the who and Tedros and all those right. um, when, when the, the who can clean up its um, child predatory sexual antics in, the, in uh, Haiti and the Congo for which not a single person has ever gone to jail, maybe then they can take another step up, but they have a bad record. And, you know, I mentioned this because people don't know this. The mainstream media hasn't really covered it. Go look it up. You can see it on AP and Reuters and BBC. It's, it's, it's horrendous what they do because they create and they go into places of chaos. Now, in answer to your question, as far as this, it seemed to me um, when Mr. Biden came out and, you know, he could have just, it was apparently already scheduled. He didn't have to come out and make it a thing. You know, National Review did a piece about it, a piece about this. Um, you know, the, the, it just became national news. Why? Because you're taunting people. You're trying right. to provoke people so you can then label them the problem. The yeah. domestic terrorists are they have their their president in the White House already. They've already they're wreaking terrorism on our borders, our constitutional rights, our farms, all kinds of regulatory structures that are going to drive up inflation. They're destroying our currency. They're sacrificing our um, constitutional God-given only unalienable liberties to international cabals of un, unanswerable people. So why would President Biden do that if he actually wanted to win votes in a traditional election that wasn't fixed? It's either fixed or I think more likely when he did that, that literally was a way of saying, you know, I don't care what you vote. I can do whatever I want because I'm going to declare martial law soon. Maybe a false flag attack by these MAGA people in New York City on uh, during an eclipse, you know, just you, you look, we have to protect you. Right. So I smelled a rat. So I wrote a piece for American Thinker called Good Christian Nationalist Friday. And I actually stepped up my game. And it's funny you say that because I actually was very clear in some of the things I like on my sub stack, small farm republic, that I respect people of all religions. Right. And that the Judeo Christian foundations of this country, I speak as a lawyer. Uh, I, as I write in my piece, even before I was a Christian, I could see we were a Christian nation. I wasn't, I wasn't raised Christian at all. Where else do people think abolition or the abolitionist movement came from? Where do people think that these rights and the rights of unalienable rights come from, that all men are created equal? And I got attacked on my Substack by people basically openly hating Christians and trying to deny that truth. Because if there's one thing cancel culture wants to cancel, it's the Judeo-Christian of tradition and Christianity itself, because it says all people are equal, that we all have certain rights. And we're in the way. We're in the way of the Marxists. Yeah. We're in the way of the secularists. And they want to impose their Marxist secular theology in lieu of our traditions. And they're eviscerating the Constitution along with everything else to do so. And yeah. one more plug, not really a plug, but I wrote a piece about this as a lawyer called Woke Theocracy, I think in America, it's on my Substack, right. And I track as a lawyer that the definition according to case law of what a religion is, is met by the woke cult. And the woke cult has swept through our military, our FBI, our everything. And um, so, yeah, I think that it, it that itself by Biden was a declaration of war on Christians and a, and a sort of Hillary Clinton-esque get over it. I'm going to be your tyrant forever now because I'm just going to, I don't even need to run for election anymore. I do what I want. In fact, next year for Easter, I'm going to have national uh, late trimester abortion visibility day. I mean, we are dealing with, and you know what it was? It was exactly what you're saying. It was to provoke and then watching their, their mouthpiece media then kick into a look at those Christians and Catholics that had a problem with this. Again, uh, what, what the numbers I see 1.6, uh, percent of Americans identify as transgender, 1.6%, uh, 64% identify as Christian. 
Uh, and so, you know, they, 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 it doesn't make any sense that they would have done that. And like you said, so it was on the books for this weekend, but then it was the PR campaign of all of these governors putting out tweets, all of the agencies, the FBI, the DOJ, Department of Education, a bunch of agencies that are unconstitutional and should be abolished anyway, putting out th this thing, knowing that it's Easter when, you know, that's a fundamental lack of respect and showing them that we we don't really care about you. And again, you bring up uh, a really good point uh, as as uh, the best example is Mao's China, where there could be no God because the state is God. And in America, they're creating the idea that this regime, this state, the O'Biden, I call it O'Biden for a reason, uh, is God and that uh, you will just sit down and shut up. And um, we uh, you, you talked to me before we came on. We have a lot of different things going on um, in trying to control God's planet and especially nature. Um, I know but Massey put in a bill that I said on Twitter, I said in 2024 that you have to put in a bill to state that people can grow food themselves wherever they want on their own land without interference by the government needs to have a bill submitted to allow that in 2024 in the United States of America is completely insane. Uh, but you brought up also some of these APA things. So what did you see this morning that triggered you to think uh, to write? a piece about, I think you got Malone Substack about it, but um, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, the tip is from Robert Malone Substack, and it's about new EPA regulations in the name of environmental cleanup or climate change are going to, well, in this case, water uh, water supplies. Interesting that they're not, well, oh, let me hit on this because actually this is interesting. So what they're doing is imposing some very um, extraordinary um, business killing costs particularly on slaughterhouse, small scale slaughter facilities. I've actually written this morning to two of them in the area to find out if they will be impacted. Right. Uh, Thomas Massey has also been a proponent of the Prime Act, which would allow us to raise more of our meats locally and share them. As I've written and said, why would I have to put in the constitution that I have a right to breathe air and drink water? Right. Uh, Biden announces that he that everybody has a universal right to, to clean water. And the, the 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 regulations that the EPA just passed, I have some pieces coming out about this at Liberty Nation where I'm a staff writer. I hurt my brain doing a deep dive. Um, they have SEC regulations that are 1,180 pages for a new rule. EPA rules for tailpipe emissions that are 866 pages for a new rule that will make you not be able to buy anything but an EV car. They, they, they restrict not just what the emissions are, for instance, of my truck, but of the entire fleet manufactured. Well, the manufacturers are losing money on EV cars and consumers don't want them, but they won't be able to sell gas powered cars unless those are offset by a certain amount of EV cars. This is a complete uh, takeover of our constitution. The Biden administration has a pattern of bypassing the constitution and Congress to just use regulatory agencies that are already captured by big business. Who makes money when you sell EV right. cars and solar panels and heat pumps? Follow the money. Are they polluting? The new PA, PFAS regulations, which are forever chemicals, your listeners may know. And I, I do hope your listeners will listen to what I'm about to talk to uh, talk about because everything is about food. They Everything else is a watch the birdie distraction so that people will be upset about things like transgenderism and the transgender people will starve with the rest of the people that are claiming victimhood because the ultimate victimhood is when you don't have food. The American revolution was won with food. So if the government's coming out to clean up water from um, facilities that process meats, meanwhile, their PFAS regulations, there are two sets. One are for drinking water regulations. So stay with me. This is why I'm a lawyer to try to translate all this for your listeners. They will regulate six PFAs. They won't go into effect for some time and they will pass most of the costs on to local public water utilities to implement them down to four parts per trillion. Now, PFAs, forever chemicals, are awful, in fact, causing cancers and, and other behavioral issues and all kinds of health problems, particularly in the reproductive system, and particularly their hormone disruptors. They can cause um, men to think they're women and what have you because they, they can mimic uh, natural hormones. And But none of the regulations actually restrict the issuance or emission of PFAs. They're going to just keep being generated while the taxpayers have to clean up the water, while the government protects the companies that are generating them. How many PFAs and other chemicals are generated by solar panel manufacturing, EV car manufacturing, and heat pumps? 
Right. Oh, but wait, carbon dioxide. So we have to take away your food supply to stop some potential effluent from in the water supply of phosphorus or nitrogen that don't kill you while your children are exposed to these chemicals from a manufacturing industry that has controlled is controlling all of our regulatory agencies and pulls the strings of the puppet Biden. This is what's happening. Now, the other PFAS regulations won't take effect. When they do take effect, they haven't passed. Um, they will re they're only about 45 pages long, but they require businesses, all businesses who have emitted any PFAs or imported any PFAs, uh, forever chemicals, since 2011 till now to report everything they've ever issued. This Some of these companies are gone. But that's a huge regulatory burden. Right. It won't even if they have two years to comply. So it'll be like four or five years before the government collects all the information to then what? Tell a company to stop right. emitting PFAs. By the way, that according to the EPA, there are 12,034 identified PFAs right now. These are Teflon frying pans, but they're household goods. They're, so so if you really cared about the environment, oh, but carbon dioxide. Oh, it's a watch the birdie distraction. It's a climate cult. Uh, we're probably not warming the planet with carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide feeds plants. So right. why are you coming after food? And why does Thomas Massey, getting back to your point, have to pass a law to tell me I can breathe air, drink water, or grow my own food? And that's why I'm a defiant homesteader in trying to educate people about watch your food. Yeah, Watch it for quality, watch it for availability, right. because if there's a disruption of this e economic system through an electronic currency, currency collapse, or disruption of commerce, you're going to starve really, really fast. And you're going to be worse off than Haitians or Ugandans in about 48 hours. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to also mention that the um, we've done I've done shows in the past about the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, the public private partnership in uh, Davos had a whole panel on water and how, you know, everything's about everyone deserves Right. Everyone deserves uh, clean water. That whole concept, what you're talking about, what Biden's saying is actually part of Agenda 2030. And it has been said multiple times since 2019, at least about water, taking over the water supply, centrally controlling the water supply, making sure and all under the guise of climate emergency, climate change or whatever. But these if people go look up weform.org and just put in water, water you're going to see this is part of the global governance control model is controlling the water, just like the EV cars. EV cars also allow themselves to be tracked, traced, and surveilled. We, we've learned recently that the EV cars already, but also regular cars that have Google, um, I mean, Google Maps or uh, CarPlay from Apple or whatever are transferring information. We have a full surveillance state. So a lot of this is also about surveillance and also controlling not just food, but clean water, which none of this is necessary, honestly. Um, and the truth, uh, people need to start accepting is that when a Barack Obama chimed on to Agenda 2030, which is a global governance model, end of nation states, and a full track and trace surveillance, uh, basic technocracy with a totalitarian top-down rule, it's taking the power that we already have been usurped. Uh, in my opinion, our government is fully captured, but taking it completely away from the people and putting it on a blockchain track and trace surveillance and how better than to do that than to have everyone dependent on the government that acts as God. So um, this is a very dangerous time and we really have to fight. You know, another thing you brought up about the regulations too is that this happened when Rob uh, Rob's and his brother had a bank that was too small to save back in 2008. And they, they hung on past 2008. But what happened after that to the banks that did survive and did not get bailouts were regulations that came that they could not possibly keep up with, would have to hire all new people, would have to learn what the regulations are. It became the regulations strangled the banks that survived that didn't get bailouts. So that's what it sounds like they're doing, going to be tried at doing with the farms that survive after, you know, all all these shutdowns and the manufacturing plants and all these rules, then any small businesses and farms that uh, have these chemicals or water or whatever will be will be destroyed by keeping up with regulations that are totally unconstitutional as it is. Well, I have nothing more to say. You've covered it all very adroitly. Um, amen, sister. Have a good day. I hope your listeners heard everything you said. They can play it back. Yeah. But I can, of course, add some things. Me and my sheep behind me. <laughs> I have too many sheep. Price of sheep uh, and lambs is going through the roof, by the way. Um, the price of beef had hit an all-time high. It's it's dripping, dipping right now, I think, because of the bird flu. And they're going to come after 
small beef holders uh, like me. I've been doing this for a while, and I can tell you, I am, I am, um, I'm well informed about what we're talking about when it comes to food. But to tie it back to the WHO in 2030, the agenda, um, 10, 15 years ago, I, I largely dismissed the 2030 uh, paranoia. I said, no, no, America has a U.S. Constitution. We'd never do that. Well, we've seen it. It's jettisoned. All of those rights that we have taken for granted, that that covenantal contract uh, in America has, has stood for 250 years, probably longer than the founders um, thought it would. And now it's under attack. Yeah. You mentioned water in the name of international water um, protection. Yeah. You forgot equity. Okay. Uh, equity is the other thing. So all of this, uh, Richard Lugutko is a fellow who's written a book called The Demon in Democracy. And he talks talks about how, you know, all of these are of a piece, the gender orientation, gender, sexual orientation, um, transgenderism, climate, racism, all of a piece. And if you're against climate change, well, you, you're you disinforming people and you are, you're a threat to the world. And Greta Thunberg, who is a, a pawn, I think she doesn't realize, and she gets so much, you know, fame to get arrested. She's not doing anything. Um, other than serving the same corporate masters, look at the WEF. Anybody can look at the partnership and you will see the same industrial food dominating companies that have destroyed our soil and our water now telling us they're going to rescue us by absolute totalitarian control, renewables and, and synthetic meats. Why would you go after cows instead of lawnmowers and, and computers and cell phones that all pollute uh, when you're not prioritizing food over other things? In the name of equity, they take money away from poor people to give to rich people to buy EVs, to buy solar panels, to buy heat pumps. I've been writing about this. I had a piece on The Federalist recently about heat pumps. Right. Heat pumps, even if they work great, here in Vermont, we can lose power for days or weeks at a time. A heat pump, you're gonna freeze to death, right? You get Don't get rid of your wood stove. And you're telling us there will be more extreme weather events, so it's more likely the power lines will go down. And as I have a piece out recently, we've not been maintaining the grid because the companies, their maintenance costs are not included in the bidding process. And so literally they're destroying the grid while amping up the burden on it, including for AI, data processing, and all these EV gadgets. If it is not a deliberate plan to destroy every aspect of our ecosystem, as well as our economy and our uh, ability to get food, then they're just doing it ignorantly, but it looks concerted. And in the case of PFAs that I mentioned, if you do not pay for public drinking water supplies to be um, to be fixed, then you're passing that cost on disproportionately to low-income people. I'll explain this so you might remember I was a tax attorney for a number of years. So a regressive tax is one that disproportionately impact, impacts the poor. So the progressives are extraordinarily regressive. Uh, Vermont's electric rates are an estimated $63 million a year higher, according to our Department of Public Utilities just to, to fund the net metering program. We've actually asked for them to stop charging fixed income retiree Vermonters who, whose incomes don't go up more and more for electricity. The same will happen with water. If you're in North Carolina and your water rates go up, let's say $200 a year, and if you make a million dollars a year, that's not a very high percentage of your income. But if you only make $60,000 a year, that's a much higher percentage of your income and your grocery bills are going through the roof. So again, it comes back to food and the World Pandemic Treaty, the WHO, everything they're also pushing, if you look at it, everything, once you go to the WHO in the name of health, especially One Health, which right. oh, reduces no. humans yeah. to animals and elevates animals and plants to human level protections, yeah. it's quite satanic, if we could say so. It's quite demonic, again, whether one believes in that literally or figuratively, it is, it is a, a clear path towards globalist domination and destruction of humans in the name, ultimately the moral aim of, of reducing population to save the plants and the animals from the humans. What about the animal rights groups? No society in history has been this disconnected from their food that they want to ban animals in favor of plants that are dependent on GMO technologies, which means more and more chemicals. Animals give us manure. So the war on cows has nothing to do with saving climate. It has everything to do with controlling your food supply right. by a cow. Right. Uh, buy a half a cow, support your local farmer. And then you cut out the middlemen who are profiteers for years. You cut out the chemicals that are going in your food. You know, it's not coming from Paraguay or someplace where you've got hoof and mouth coming in. And then you're building not just food quality, but food security. Do not abandon your local farms 
for sequestered carbons are growing, you know, rewilding and growing trees back, you know? Yeah. So that's what's going on. And I think more and more people, I'm, that's why I wrote my book, Small Farm yeah. Republic. It's right. not, it's about a political strategy for conservatives to focus on food instead of the uh, climate alarmism that is dividing people into two carbon dioxide camps. We should all agree on, uh, you know, a gender changing endocrine disrupting chemicals. We should all agree on PFAs and phthalates and all these, you heard about all the plastics in our food process. Oh yeah, I just did a show on microplastics. It's te- it's horrifying. I can't even believe it. And nobody's doing anything. And nobody says, get rid of the plastics. Let's just get rid of the cows. When do we stand up? Well, I don't know if, if we have the people with the caliber anymore that will en masse and we would be put down if we did, but the best way to stand up is to buy a cow and to speak out. And yeah. so I'm selling yeah, and some get cows, to know your local way. farmer and and get to know and support them. There's also ideas. A lot of people uh, that I've talked to that have this mindset talk about co-op or bartering or, you know, being as independent as possible from anything having to do with the government, especially when it comes to your food supply. Um, and another thing that uh, we talk about, we talked about last time that seems to be evolving. Um, I had on, uh, Barnes, who's the attorney for Amos Miller, um, who's being persecuted in Pennsylvania, a Amish farmer that they don't want to be allowed to sell raw milk and other things. And it's like, like, when you talk about the constitution, I mean, the last people that you would ever think that the government would be targeting are the Amish for God's sakes. You know, they do their own thing. We have a lot we could learn from them. But um, there is a lot of targeting of farmers around the country. And when you see them targeting those farmers, especially in Pennsylvania, Ohio and uh, upstate New York, uh, what does that say to you? I mean, this 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 is unbelievable to me that individual farmers are being harassed and, and shut down and it's happening more and more and getting more uh, dangerous because they're showing up and like shutting them down with just like they're showing up to kick in doors of journalists and uh, January 6 people. They're starting to do that with farmers. Hi guys, thank you for watching the show. You know, I'm always telling you to be prepared and expect the unexpected. Well, the wellness company has great medical emergency kits to make sure you can do just that. In a world where supply chain vulnerabilities threaten our access to life-saving medication, I highly recommend you get a wellness company medical emergency kit. With eight essential medications, including amoxicillin, z pack and ivermectin, you can be prepared for any medical emergency that comes your way. They have a medical emergency kit, a contagion kit, a emergency travel kit, and a first aid emergency kit. To support your own health and support the Mel K Show, please go to twc.health slash Mel K now and use code Mel K for big savings at checkout. Don't wait until it's too late. Take back control of your health today with the Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit. Because when it comes to your family's well-being, preparedness is key. The Wellness Company, empowering you to face the unexpected with confidence. Because they know that if you control the food, you control the people. Stalin and Mao knew it. Mao killed maybe 50 or 60 million people with starvation, whether or not intentionally. Right. Stalin did it intentionally. The de of the peasant farmers, uh, 6 million people estimated in um, Ukraine alone. But in Russia, I think it's Harvest of Sorrow is a book I read back in the 80s that doc- might be 30 million people. Starvation is a horrible place to, to way to die. Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote about it in the Gulag Archipelago. Oh, if you right. went in, in Russia and tried to pick grain out of what are called the gleanings in the Bible, the leftover crops, they would shoot and kill you if they caught you. So you're choosing between trying to feed your children or being shot. We will be there soon. And that is what, I mean, I know this is horrifying and people don't want to believe it, but it's time to wake up or you'll be in the wrong camp. You'll be in the sheep pole people being put in a Uyghur camp. Yeah, um, Amos Miller, actually, I learned about what was going. This has been going on with him for years. Uh, my battle here in Vermont started in 2016, I believe, when they tried to ban all unfarmed slaughter in this state. And I helped rally the farmers and fight back. We threatened them with a lawsuit. And one of the things when I learned about that was Dave Gumpert's book, um, uh, uh, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Food Rights. And I worked with Dave Berg, who has written a constitutional uh, a piece about a law review article about the constitutional right to own food, your, raise your own food or drink raw milk if you want, as I do, and illegally buy it if I can. You know, I don't, I don't need the government tracking me. The Amish have it right, except I don't think they carry guns. So they're going to be the first place right. 
You have no ability. You can't protect your First Amendment, let alone your food supply, if you can't defend yourself. And uh, people need to be ready to, to do what the founding fathers did or, you know, so live free or die, you know. Right. And so I will give you a brief list because I'll try to be brief because it's big. They count on the complexification. They count on us not watching the birdie. All right. So here's a watch the birdie on the Biden administration and the attack on farms just in the last six months. All right. EPA regulations that um, increase the number of so-called endangered species that would be tracked and protected means farmers have to track and not use an awful lot of chemicals and other things. And it's so vague that compliance becomes impossible. The SEC regs that I mentioned that I believe are 1160 pages, either that, no, that might be the, uh, you can read my articles, 860 pages, just for a rule change mandating that publicly traded companies report all of the environmental consequences of their purchasing downstream. That would, if implemented, so they, they held off on part of that rule but that rule, if implemented, would require, and, and the investors don't care. This is yes. all, in the, the SEC doesn't have the authority. They don't have the authority to regulate the environment, but they are. All of this is ultra vires, meaning beyond their authority, outside of the law. And this would put down, put out a lot of farmers. I have a piece about to come out about this. Um, and, and some states are pushing back. It's taking away states' rights. It's going to destroy farms, especially medium-sized farms. Right. So they know exactly what they're doing. So that's just SEC reporting rules, which many farms that are already offer, operating on small profit margins are going to say, well, that's it for me. They've been after Vermont or American farmers for 100 years. They recognize things about farmers. Farmers are independent, right. defiant, free thinking, and have their own food. They're really hard to to control. And so throughout, you know, Wendell Berry wrote The Unsettling of America. This was the corralling of millions of Americans off of farms and into cities where we could see how what a wonderful life that is for the city mice right now, while they denigrate and look down their noses at people in the country like we're stupid. Do they not understand where their garbage goes or where their food comes from or their drinking water comes from? They're about to find out. And in yeah. fact, the the flock of people to Vermont for the eclipse is kind of like the flock of people to Vermont during COVID. People will suddenly wake up and go, oh my gosh, this is the worst place in the world to be. I live in a paved uh, uh, oasis away from God's oasis. I can't even eat. And so then you have the water regulations I mentioned that are just coming out now that I haven't studied yet that will, what, shut down small scale meat processors so that JBS foods and the large right. processors will dominate all of the integrated meat industry. What Gumpert points out in his book is, this is, uh, this is the insidious creep of large corporate interests that work through regulatory agencies that are not responsive to the political system. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're a, a career uh, bureaucrat in the Department of Agriculture, let's say in Maine or Vermont, you don't care who the governor is. You don't have to answer to the governor. The governor's come and go. You right. answer the federal exactly. government that gives you the subsidies that allows you to hire more people. These are technocrats. These are bureaucrats. These are people right. that have never had real jobs. Vermont's largest employer is our government. And right. now you get to RFID chips and putting microchips in every chicken and every cow. The USA Patriot Act after 9-11 transferred the Department of Agriculture under the authority of the Department of Homeland Security. I've Terrible. never heard that term before. It sort of sounds Nazi to me. And yes. so now in the in name of protecting you, they're going to regulate every cow and they can seize every cow and sheep in the event of martial law that we know Biden will be declaring soon. Cheerful. Yeah, well, I mean, to me, I think the Patriot Act is the most unconstitutional thing that ever happened to this country. We were, you know, it was another trauma incident. Everyone just wanted to have a fix, fix something. We all agreed to that. And what I talk about a lot on my show is, what I call the fourth branch of the government, the unconstitutional intelligence blob that came out of the Patriot Act, because I believe that they've captured all the other three branches. And that intelligence blob is out of control. Uh, they're track tracing and surveilling everyone. And they want to track trace and surveil our food and our farming and our cars and everything. And this is all, again, about Agenda 2030. And I want to say to your point, in the beginning, when people heard about Agenda 21, or when I did, I thought, yeah, well, they have no right, they have no ability to do that. But then when Obama signed on to it in 2015, I, with Hillary Clinton believed to be coming in on the back end and Clinton Global Initiative being very involved in the creation of Agenda 2030 uh, in different ways as well. Then you had, um, he didn't tell anyone what it was about, the 17 development goals. If you go to any of their websites and look it up on any of the partners of Agenda 2030, you're going to see the first thing it says is that nation states no longer work. And we have global issues that need global governance. 
And, and that is the push. And Obama was totally in on it. I believe these people and, you know, right now, Larry Fink, and Jamie Dimon, they have more power than anyone we have elected into office, in my opinion. They're the public private partnership that are in, in, you know, the parent company running America. But they don't they don't. We the people have been totally left out of this whole scenario at this point. And then in 2023, uh, September, Biden Harris had a big event with a gala in New York City with the BIS and World Bank and IMF and UN and World Economic Forum, where they celebrated halfway to Agenda 2030. And there's the Clinton Global Initiative relaunched the same day with John Podesta. And if you don't understand what's going on, uh, just go look at what they're doing and what they're saying. But we really do have to take seriously that a lot of the executive orders coming out, especially from the USDA, is attached to that control mechanism. Uh, now, I know that there's been pushback, but we uh, back when they did the COP conference in Glasgow and Bloomberg and New York Stock Exchange and Kerry and Gore and all of them announced the natural asset companies, natural asset class. Uh, this was a full takeover of all resources by this public private partnership I call the parent company um, of everything, including what we're talking about, water and air and and farming and all of that. And then they would turn it into some kind of monetary uh, system. Now, there's been pushback against that. But a lot of what you're saying about these regulations do seem to fall in line with that. And of course, the SEC would be involved in that. So people have to be very aware of um, of what's happening in terms of centralizing power when it comes to the food supply. Correct. Well, they do. And let me speak to that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Thank you very much for having me on. You've covered it all again. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I will confess to your listeners so that maybe some who are not already convinced or might be uh, deceived Democrats would wake up. I voted for Obama for reasons that I would explain as to do, because I believe that he was the most um, equipped to handle the, uh, the, the, uh, the crisis on Wall Street. And I saw that coming and I wrote about it at the time. Uh, but in fact, he bailed out Wall Street instead of Americans. In fact, he promised to give us GMO labeling. Instead, he watered down the GMO labeling laws that we got passed here in Vermont that would have advised people what's in their food. It's harder than ever to know what you're eating. Natural flavors are not. And people get so overwhelmed with it. It's what Wendell Berry would call, uh, we become resigned. There's a resignation that goes on. Well, how can I know what's in it? How can I know it? I give up. Stop eating Doritos. You know, that's a good start. Stop eating McDonald's. If you eat, even eat occasionally at fast food restaurants, you're much more likely to have phthalates, P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S in you and your children. Children are particularly vulnerable. Women and girls are particularly vulnerable. Why wouldn't you get educated? You start somewhere. Read up on the clean 15 and the dirty dozen when it comes to produce. Grapes and, and strawberries will kill you much more quickly than avocados or bananas or grass-fed beef. So there's a pattern here. And the pattern also was echoed again from Hillary Clinton, who said, get over yourself. Get right. over yourself, Mel. You're a deplorable if you don't. Who rules who? Right. And Obama bailed us all, bailed out on us also with Monsanto in Monsanto right. v. Bowman. The, the Obama White House sided with Monsanto against farmers so that they could patent all seeds while right. they keep seed bank in Iceland. So when you start connecting all of this, people might want to consider uh, the book by Thomas Frank called Listen Liberals. He's a liberal. And he told the liberals, you can't make your entire political apparatus about hating Donald Trump. It will backfire. Well, in traditional democracy, that would be the case. In a fascist tyranny, you actually don't care. You just need to scare people about Donald Trump. <gasps> Donald Trump's going to declare martial law. Well, you already have. You actually forgave loans. And when the Supreme Court overruled it, you, you've joked that you were just going to give away more loans, you know, right. care more loans. I mean, right. I had a student loan. I paid it back. Maybe I can get my money back. You know, it's not 150 years ago like slavery, but, you know, maybe the farmers that have been shut down for years, they've been deliberately targeting farmers right. for a reason, not just profits, but for power. And so what Frank warns about in his book, Listen Liberals, is that the, the left of today are not your Democrats from 30 years ago. This is the new elite liberal class. They're the, he has a chapter called Martha's Vineyard, I think. It's all about them being the Martha's Vineyard class, right. which brings us to Vermont. Uh, the Biden administration announced its 30 by 30 agenda as part of its EPA. Uh, uh, you know, you may have heard this, uh, to put 30% of all America uh, aside for rewilding or conservation. Right. Wendell Berry has written that, you know, we can't trust the government that has never had good land management policies to take it aside and, and manage it. 
only in loving care by intergenerational stewardship, that is medium or small size farms, do you really have a good balanced ecological stewardship of land. For Vermont, they've announced they're, they're going to be 50% by 2050. They had to, because wow. Vermont, ultra Bernie, oh yeah, we make California, we, we're competing with California to be the first in everything. Wow. Um, but, you know, a sanctuary state for transgender children. If you're 13 and flee Louisiana, you come here under Vermont's new laws that were passed in the name of protecting women's right to reproductive liberty to kill children through viability and late trimester, you know, they, they happen here. You can come here and do it. And if you're 13 and your parents won't support you and your hormone choices and your surgeries, you come to Vermont. The federal government will pay for you to get surgeries at UVM. You wow. can sign all the consent forms and disclosures and waivers. Uh, they're not very informed consents without parental involvement. And if your parents back in Tennessee don't like it, the Vermont police and court system are ordered by law not to cooperate them when they try to find that missing child. That is pretty obscene. And that's oh where God. we are. So yeah, if, that is if, where we are now. Now with those chips in vineyard, the so. the chips in the cows and stuff is so big ranches like King Ranch, like those those giant ranches that may that, you know. I guess they they also they work with I guess Walmart and other places like that. Aren't they upset about this? Don't they have power? Do they want to chip their cattle too? The people that have literally millions of acres of, of well, I I don't cattle? talk to them much, but as I emphasize in the book, I'm not out in a war against large farmers. I think they would like you us. Know, why to aren't they having a problem with these regulations or are they? And we just don't know about it. Well, I'll explain why, because so, you know, not to cut you off, but so I think that those are the very, well, a lot of the large chicken manufacturers or farmers are already imprisoned under contracts, you know, with large institutions to the extent oh. they are the large institutions they have an obscene amount of you know pigs in one place and those are the companies that dominate the food supply they squeeze the margins down to those the, the lost little guys so that literally we can't be profitable so uh, the best profit for me is that it keeps me fit you know um but my costs would be higher than their costs and they don't care they already are on the radar the government isn't doesn't have to why is the government coming after my chickens in a, in a I just saw a podcast out of England saying that in England now you have to register every single chicken every right, single that's bird. what they want here I and saw that they want that legislation here you have to register every animal uh, yes. with a different name with a different number it's crazy I don't it's just totally insane and so always in the name of safety, right? Security or safety always. and safety. Yeah. That's how they take it out of the food supply. And they're making the food supply visibly more unsafe. And every time they shut down the small farmers, uh, Joel Salatin has written about this. Wendell, J Wendell Berry has an article from 1978. He wrote, it's only a few pages long. It's called Sanitation in the Small Farm, how they did this in Kentucky. He's writing about this in 1978. They shut down a lot of local farms in the name of more stringent safety requirements. That's why the Prime Act and some other legislation is about deregulating based on scale. So if you're a large scale chicken producer per chicken to give them vaccines or mRNA vaccines or or to identify them, you're already set up and it's low cost and you've got nothing to hide anyway because they know where you are. Yeah. But if you're in the remote areas and you have one chicken in England and you can be fined 5,000 pounds, which is a lot of money, that's, you know, I don't know what the current exchange is, probably 7,500 bucks or something for one chicken, you're probably going to get rid of your chicken and put it in the freezer because you're not going to risk. So they literally use that kind of regulatory intimidation. Yeah. And so this happened in Vermont, oh, maybe 10 years or more ago. And they tried to bring in the Department of Agriculture working. So it's all very stealthy. It's a soft totalitarianism you know the federal government says well we'll give you money if you implement these regs and then they have the states do the dirty work and when the states try to do, when the state of vermont tried to do that um i actually did a, a pod a, a radio broadcast at the time and i said you can microchip my chicken when you can pry her from my cold dead hand all right i am a non-conformist with these things because i know what they're doing and i'm not going to comply and they can come take my chickens but i'm not going to i'm not going to microchip things all right um it's, it's I, insane I, it's not even the government the government has no authority to do that anyway the constitution bill of rights are very clear i don't know why states aren't fighting harder you're in a communist state i get and so is california we left new york but not always and the people have a lot of power and and you know the people have to start taking more responsibility like your book small farm republic is about 
about taking the power back into the people's hands, you know, and, and finding ways to be independent in this world that they're trying to centralize everything so that we're totally dependent, which is how they win. And then the with for me, I think the full track and trace surveillance, the, the blob that came out of the Patriot Act totally should be reversed. Re they should revoke the Patriot Act. But on top of that, they've continued to create more and more ways to track, trace and surveil us. And what better way than through our food? But um, the last thing I do want to ask you as a tax attorney as well is um, I, I'm sure you've seen it lately. So it has come out that, of course, they lied about um, all of the new taxes and everything. And it looks like the biggest target for taxes actually is people who are making between $100,000 and $200,000 are the most audits and the most people being most hurt. So again, you know, we're at a place where it's just, it, they keep squeezing people out of everything. But I, I mean, what's the end goal? Do you think that they, they prefer everyone to be on this universal basic income and nobody, no middle class? people survive is this is that the end game here because it's just every few weeks you see something and you say god they really just don't want any small businesses at all we are right now in 34 trillion dollars worth of debt we have geopolitical chaos everywhere the central bank digital currency is looming the BRICS nations have expanded beyond saudi arabia and continue to expand and all I know is that many experts keep telling me that gold and silver is the best way to hedge against inflation and to protect your savings going forward. Did you know you can convert your 401k and IRA into physical gold and silver today? It can be shipped direct to your door or stored in a secure location. So go to our partners page at themelkshow.com, fill out the form, and someone from Beverly Hills Precious Metals will get in touch with you right away to help you figure out the best course for you and your family ahead. Stay secure. Stay safe and prepare now. Well, that's an interesting observation. It's about control. And the people you want to control is that middle. You've already got the rich people because they're part of your cabal, probably. And you certainly, yeah. and they have more money to resist an audit. If you only, you know, if you live off 50 or 60 grand a year, like I do, you're probably not big potatoes. And maybe you're not a big part of the population. In fact, a lot of people on lower income, they don't have the luxury of, doing much anyway, because their most of their taxes are withheld. So there's not really much money there or justification. The middle class, it's an assault on the middle class and the middle class family and Christians, as you say. And so a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, you've hit the sweet spot. And now you've got people that if they don't comply, you just can intimidate them by merely suggesting that the IRS may be visiting. Right. And you've probably seen the FBI agents visiting people uh, you know, for for social for comments yeah. on, on now that we saw that widespread video that was against a person who is uh, anti-Israel. Right. Well, guess what? That still conditions the FBI agents to be compliant. And if they don't like it, so now when they go after hard right-wingers because we believe that you know the Constitution is built on Judeo-Christian traditions and I'm going to go to jail for that, they've already been kind of tested because if you're uncomfortable yeah. going after people, then, well, you can find another job. If you're in school and you're uncomfortable with transgender issues and calling your child a different name at school than their parents do and not letting the parents know at parents' meetings and you don't like that, well, maybe you should get another job. And if you're in the military and you're not okay with transgenderism and taking the vaccines, well, then maybe we don't want you in the military because we are filtering them to be compliant. And the same then is happening through the tax code. If you're a taxpayer and actually at hundred to $200,000, that could be a big dent in your wallet. Part of my problem yeah. my issue is you come after me, I don't know anything, right. you know? So that's, it's, it's all of a piece of a Marxist globalist, as crazy as that sounds, it's not hiding itself anymore. It's in no. plain view and people need to get their heads out of the ostrich world or they and their children and grandchildren will be swept away in the tide that's coming. It is coming. I agree. And um, you do extraordinary work. You're also very prolific these days. I see you uh, putting out pieces a lot. Uh, can you tell everyone where to follow you, how to find you, where your sub stack is, how to get your book? Your book is becoming, even when you wrote it back then, I mean, I actually added you on before the book when you were still working on it. It was a big success. But I strongly suggest people pay attention to what's going on with our, not just our food supply, but the supply chain and and really find ways to become more independent, less, less counting on the government or any of that. That and really finding a way and, uh, and small uh, farm republic is a really has a lot of good tips on doing that as well. So please tell my audience where to find uh, all, all of you. 
<laughs> well, Small Farm Republic uh, through my publisher, Chelsea Green Publishing, directly right. or at Amazon. I think it's discounted now. That's fine. I'm working on the sequel. I didn't right. write it to get rich because uh, then they'll tax me. I want people to read it. It'll <laughs> equip them about why their water supply too and their soil is eroding and all these things that are unaddressed by climate change. Right. I'm a staff writer now with Liberty Nation. Uh, dot com. I believe our Liberty Nation is a growing platform, very good source for materials. I'm also doing more video work there. And right. my Substack at smallfarmrepublic.com um, on Substack is where I collect everything. So I write some things locally. I write for the Federalist, American Spectator, um, different areas, and then my Liberty Nation stuff. I reprint it all there, plus some private content. So that's a place to stay in touch, free right. or paid. I'm grateful. I just... I'm in it for the information. The currency of distributing information is the best infection that we can uh, counter this, this toxic uh, forced vaccination plan with. So I'm grateful for your work and your listeners you. and honored and always have fun being with you. Me too. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And everyone, get that book and share it with your friends and family. The more that we decentralize as they try to centralize everything, the less they can be successful. And, and I do believe that they are uh, panicking and their plans are falling apart, but everyone needs to do what they need to do in their individual uh, lives to be a part of that. Thank you so much, sir. I'll see you again. God bless you. Thanks. You know that there are more than 60,000 known chemicals in tap water? and the EPA only tests for 91 of them? This is why we're so grateful that we partnered with Healthy Hydration. They offer whole home water filtration, shower filters, under the counter pre-filters, molecular hydrogen water machines, hydrogen water bottles, and so much more for a healthier home and family. So go to themelkshow.com and click on our partners page and check out Healthy Hydration and everything they have in store for your health and wellness today. Great news, guys. We've been beta testing with my founding members, the Mel K Show, live on Sunday nights at 7 p.m., and it is going incredibly well. We have a community that we all connect. We can share information. Questions are asked of me, of other people. We share back and forth. This is really a place to go on Sunday nights. Get ready for the week. Share what's working, what's not working, how we can make things better, how we can align with each other. Wherever you are in the country, there's many things you can do. So we've added locals now. So on locals, you can also join us on Sunday nights or you can join members.themelkshowlive.com. The members at melkshowlive.com is a community for you. That continues 24-7, seven days a week. We put up many different things there, ideas, documentaries that are great. People tell what they're doing in their local community. They can reach out to other people all over the country. It's kind of has a cool Facebook vibe, but it's really about community, fellowship, helping each other, organizing, all of that. You can also just join locals and join us on Sunday nights where you can ask questions, interact with me. I'm going to have on some of my best guests. It's an incredible platform. It's just getting started. It's totally secure. And please join us Sundays at 7 p.m. locals or members.themelkshowlive.com. I will see you there. This is so much fun and I'm so grateful. And now we have a totally secure community where we can all interact while we are fighting this battle for freedom and our future. See you there. Thank you.